Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR Pharma Tube. In the previous videos, we discussed on amino glycosides. For the other topics of antibiotics and medicinal chemistry, click on the links given in the description below this video. In this video, we shall learn the historical background and the development of tetracyclines. History of tetracyclines. The tetracyclines have been found important in the treatment of bacterial infections since their discovery in 1948. Tetracyclines were discovered in the 1940s and they were first reported in the scientific literature in 1948. They exhibited activity against a wide range of microorganisms. The first members of the tetracycline group to be discovered were chlortetracycline and oxytetracycline. Chlortetracycline was discovered in 1945 under the supervision of the scientist Yella Pragada Subbarao and Benjamin Minji Duggar. It was isolated from the organism called Streptomyces aureofaciens and the isolated drug was so named Aureomycin because of its color. The drug was exciting due to its oral activity and broad spectrum of antibacterial activity. Following the discovery of chlortetracycline, oxytetracycline and tetracycline were isolated from related streptomyces fermentations. Oxytetracycline was patented in 1949 and came into commercial use in 1950. It belongs to a class of aromatic polyketad antibiotics produced by streptomyces. It is used to treat infections caused by chlamydia, for example the chest, eye and genital infections and the infections caused by mycoplasma organisms, for example, pneumonia. Shortly thereafter, in 1957, demiclocycline was discovered. Demiclocycline is used as an antibiotic in the treatment of Lyme disease, acne, and bronchitis. After elegant structural elucidation that relied mostly upon degradation studies, the tetracyclines were recognized as a class of new antibacterial agents. The tetracyclines were soon established as landmark antibiotics due to superb oral efficacy, broad spectrum antibacterial activity and exceptional tolerability in man. Furthermore, the tetracyclines were effective against some pathogens resistant to existing beta-lactam antibiotics at this time. The excellent antibacterial properties of the naturally occurring tetracyclines led to engage in attempts to produce semi-synthetic derivatives. The parent compound tetracycline was obtained directly from chlortetracycline by chemical reduction that is hydrogenolysis indicating that semi-synthetic modifications were possible. Some chemists devised approaches for the total synthesis of tetracyclines some efforts were aimed at building on each ring in a sequential fashion. Another concern was the introduction of various functional groups onto the tetracyclic nucleus. Despite many innovative approaches, only a few total synthesis of prototypic tetracyclines would be realized. It became apparent that wholly synthetic tetracyclines would not be practical due to the sheer number of chemical reactions and troublesome chromatographic purifications. However, these efforts were not without merit since along the way several structural features were identified as being crucial for antibacterial activity. In addition, some chemical transformations would later prove useful for the construction of potent semi-synthetic tetracycline derivatives. Indeed, the next generation of tetracyclines to be developed were obtained by partial synthesis. The marketed semi-synthetic derivatives include methacycline, doxycycline and minocycline. These derivatives differ from the older agents in the substitution pattern on the tetracyclic nucleus. The tetracycle itself is not changed. Methacycline is used as a precursor in the industrial synthesis of doxycycline hyclate. Doxycycline was patented in 1957 and came into commercial use in 1967. The absence of a hydroxyl group in C6 of doxycycline prevents the formation of the nephrotoxic compound. Doxycycline is used to treat bacterial pneumonia, acne, chlamydia infections, Lyme disease, cholera, typhus and syphilis. It is also used to prevent malaria in combination with quinine. It may be taken by mouth or by injection into a vein. 
Minocycline was patented in 1961 and came into commercial use in 1971. It is generally less preferred than the doxycycline antibiotic. It is used for the treatment of acne and rheumatoid arthritis. It is taken by mouth or applied onto the skin. A number of additional analogues have been described that are variations on the same theme that is substituent changes at the same positions indicative of the fact that these positions are amenable to synthetic manipulations without the destruction of the antibacterial activity. Despite the successes of the early tetracyclines, derivatives with enhanced water solubility were sought in order to improve absorption and offer different delivery routes. For these reasons, a variety of tetracycline products were designed and synthesized. Some of the compounds were developed by modifying the carboxamide functionality of the tetracycline nucleus. For example, the pyrrolidinyl methyl derivative that is Rolly tetracycline readily liberates the free tetracycline but is several thousand times more water soluble. In other words, it is a N-managed base prodrug that is prepared from tetracycline by condensation with pyrrolidine and formaldehyde. Unlike the conventional tetracyclines, Rolly tetracycline can be administered parenterally. A number of amino acid derivatives such as the lysinomethyl tetracycline known as limecycline are similarly water soluble. It is approximately 5000 times more soluble than tetracycline base. Limecycline was introduced by Pharmitalia in 1963. It is used to treat a range of infections. Its better absorption profile makes it preferable to tetracycline for moderately severe acne. At this time, the future of tetracycline antibacterial chemotherapy is in doubt for several reasons. First of all, tetracycline resistant organisms are common today and often dictate that an alternative therapy be administered. Secondly, structural modifications to the tetracycline nucleus have been limited and total synthetic approaches are not practical. Lastly, many laboratories have abandoned tetracycline research in order to investigate newer and more promising antibacterial agents. However, there have been some recent findings that are likely to renew interest in the tetracyclines. Development of tetracyclines Tetracyclines were noted for their broad-spectrum antibacterial activity and were commercialized with clinical success beginning in the late 1940s to the early 1950s. The second-generation semi-synthetic analogues and more recent third-generation compounds show the increased potency as well as efficacy against tetracycline-resistant bacteria with improved pharmacokinetic and chemical properties. Shortly after the introduction of tetracycline therapy, the first tetracycline resistant bacterial pathogen was identified. Since then, tetracycline resistant bacterial pathogens have continued to be identified, limiting tetracycline's effectiveness in the treatment of bacterial diseases. Glycyl cyclines, for example, tetracycline, minocycline, and digycycline, and fluorocyclines are new classes of antibiotics derived from tetracycline. These tetracycline analogues are specifically designed to overcome two common mechanisms of tetracycline resistance, namely resistance mediated by acquired efflux pumps and ribosomal protection. In 2005, digycycline, the first member of a new subgroup of tetracyclines named glycylcyclines, was introduced to treat infections that are resistant to other antimicrobials. Although it is structurally related to minocycline, alterations to the molecule resulted in its expanded spectrum of activity and decreased susceptibility to the development of resistance when compared with other tetracycline antibiotics. Like minocycline, digycycline binds to the bacterial 30S ribosome blocking the entry of transfer RNA. This ultimately prevents protein synthesis and thus inhibiting bacterial growth. However, the addition of an N-N dimethyl glycylamido group at the ninth position of the minocycline molecule increases the affinity of digycycline for the ribosomal target up to five times when compared with minocycline or tetracycline. This allows for an expanded spectrum of activity and decreased susceptibility to the development of resistance.
while digicycline was the first tetracycline approved in over 20 years other new year versions of tetracyclines are currently in human clinical trials this is the list of references followed for the lesson that's all in this video the historical background and development of tetracyclines in the next class we will discuss about the structure nomenclature classification and clinical uses of tetracyclines Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.